anxious to be. So we did a call and response. When I say, I am free, you say, I am free. When I say, I'm redeemed, you say, I'm redeemed. When I, when I say, I'm justified, you say, I'm justified. Let's do this one more time. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. set free is free indeed. We are a proof that truly you have set us free. And we are grateful, Lord. Your love is deep and covering all my sins. I stand on you, my power to weep for you. Your grace is wider.
your name is higher and powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing all this way. Thank you for shining light upon us. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. Forever we will make you proud. Forever we will make your name known. Forever, Lord. With the gospel in our hands, we will take it to the heads of the heads. Amen. That men will come to the light of the gospel through Amen. us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All that you put in my heart this morning, you will help me convey with accuracy. Amen. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. Amen. Have your way. Amen. That everyone watching, listening to this sermon is blessed by this teaching. Amen. And our life will never remain the same Amen. again. For in Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Come on, walk to three persons and say, welcome to church. That you are welcome to the one great church. Make them feel welcome. Make somebody feel warm this morning. Be the reason why somebody is smiling this morning. Give us his compliments. And can you please help me celebrate our online audience this morning? Glory to God. From wherever you are watching and listening to us from, I want you that we love you and we appreciate you and we are glad that we are having church with us this morning. Glory to God. Today, I'm going to continue on our teaching series, The Gospel. And today, I titled it, My Blessing. Glory to God. Which means the gospel is my blessing. So, if I venture, you have missed the first part. And the second part, ask your neighbor, where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? Very important. You don't want to miss these teachings. So, I'm sure the media has made it available for us on Telegram already. So, you can go to our Telegram page and download it in case you have missed it. Glory to God. And if they have not, I know they are hearing right now. So they are doing it. Glory to God. And I consider it done. Glory to God. <laughs> Celebrate Jesus. We have one of the best media on earth. Glory to God. He said the world does not know us. I hear what I'm saying now. But when he appears, they shall know us. So they might not know us yet, but they will. Glory to God. <laughs> we have the best media and we have the best choir in the one great church. Glory to God. Come on, celebrate the choir for that awesome ministration this morning. Glory to God. To the hands of the heads. Are you get what I'm saying? While standing at that bar, God was giving me some words for the choir and I was so blessed. Sincerely, you don't know where God is taking us. See, you don't have an imagination of it. You know, all Joseph did was to have a dream, but he does not have the imagination of how God will bless him. In fact, in that dream, they did not dash him a wife. <laughs> I don't know if you understand. In the dream that, yeah, he said his brothers are bowing, father, mother bowing. They didn't say this gift comes with what? A sweet, beautiful princess. It's not just a wife, princess, untouched, chassis. Hiya! Do you understand? Do you have dreams? Your dreams have come with some other package. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Great package. The same with the gospel. There are so many packages that come with the gospel. I tell us time without number that the gospel is a full package. It is a full package. You know, when you are subscribing to some MTN stuffs online, permit me to use those ads communication. <laughs> You know, they, they tell you terms and conditions applied, but you really don't know. And by the time you subscribe, then you understand what the, the true meaning of terms and conditions. Some of you borrow money from those online. And when you are borrowing money, they say terms and conditions, I will agree. Because you need that money, you don't know what you are accepting. And until you accept and you default, and they call somebody and you are wondering, how did they get this? My mother's number, my pastor's number. When you click terms and conditions, you accept it. There are other packages that come with it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When you accept Jesus and you say, Baba, I receive you. Many of you don't know the consequence. I told you. Some of the consequence is the blessings that are attached with it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is irrevocable. Irrevocable. Because you have already accepted just the way when you accept terms and conditions for those lapo loan, those your gimme names. 
carbon, firm, you know, when you click it, can you say, please, don't call anybody and you are owing. <laughs> Did you understand? Something? You have already accepted. So once you have accepted Jesus, you have already accepted terms and condition. You are not the one that determines what happened anymore. Who determines it? Is, some, is this, are you getting this morning? Is Jesus that determines it. That's why my life is no longer my own. I cannot determine it anymore. Jesus, I'm not doing the game just to give you. You don't enter one chance. Glory to God. You don't enter one chance. Listen to me. When the in-laws of Lot accepted to enter into the ark with Noah, sorry, the in-laws of Noah, and they choose to enter that place, when they entered, and they said, sir, this, this ark is, I don't like the way it's moving. My eyes is turning me. I want to come down. Is it possible? Is it possible for you to come down? Who is in charge of the ark? God. When you read the Bible, he locked it. It was not even Noah that locked it. God has locked you up forever. <laughs> you hear what I just said this morning? God has locked you up forever. You are forever in Christ. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? You are forever in Christ. So when we say the gospel is my blessing, what do we mean? What are we saying? And you know me, I've, I'm very loud on this. When we talk about the blessing here, we are not talking about material blessing. Please follow me. Financial blessings. No. Now listen. I'm enjoying God's financial blessings and material blessings. So I am not saying God cannot bless materially. Are you get what I'm saying now? But when it comes to the gospel, when it comes to what Christ died for, Material blessing is not one of it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Follow me carefully this morning. And let me tell you the reason why. Before Jesus manifested in the flesh, people have been having money on heads. People have been building houses with lintel. That means it's duplex. Are you getting what I'm saying now? People, when, J when David saw um, Bathsheba, where did he see it? He said from the rooftop. Are you getting something now? Upstairs. That means he is a king lounging. Lounging. Many of you, when you watch all these film, rooms, all these ancient films, look at the life they live in those movies, the kind of jacuzzi they have. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And you wonder, I was looking at the documentary of how they run those pipes into those ancient places. Far back in those years, there's a way they run those pipes before. There's automated pumping machine that we are using today. People have been running pipe by flow, and there are kings and queens possessing things. Are you getting what I'm saying now? People were getting married before Jesus came to earth. People were having children. People were having all these things. So Jesus did not come for you to have this thing because they were having it. But he says, I have come to give you something much more. Something much more. Something much more. Let me tell you the reason. The reason why many of you cannot preach to Dangote today is because your gospel is faulty. The reason why you cannot even chat Max Zuckerberg, um, X, who is, what's the name of that guy? Tesla. Hello, Max up is because you are scared. What, will I, what do I want to tell him? That God will bless him. So what is God blessing him? He's, he's rich. He's rich. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there's more to this blessing. There is a blessing that even when you have all the wealth in the world, when you don't have it, you are not blessed. Do you get what I'm just saying now? Even when you have all the financial blessing in the world, all the material blessing in the world, you have all the lands, all the cars, all the jets, but when you don't have this blessing, you have already missed out. And that is the blessing we are talking about. There is more. There is more to life. So many of you, all your life, the only thing you are pursuing is material blessing, financial blessing. There's more to life than that. Tell your neighbor, there's more to life than that. So every day you wake up, the only thing you are doing, I'm going to work. How I'll start this business. How I will do this. I will do that. No. There's more. There's more. There is more. And that's what I want to show you this morning. The more, the blessings that God has given to you. That God has given to you. That nobody can take it away from you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? See, you can be rich and be poor. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You can reach and go bankrupt. 
and go bankrupt. But this richness, this blessing, nothing can take it away from you. Nothing. 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 And this is what I've come to share with us this morning. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Open your Bible with me to the book of Romans. 15 verse 29. Romans 15 verse 29. Follow me this morning. He says, but I know that when I come to you, I shall come to you in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Christ. New King James, please. He said, I am sure that when I come to you, I will, I will give, Christ will give me what? Media, please. Don't do this this morning. He said what? But I know that when I come to you, I shall come to you what? In the fullness of the gospel of Christ. That means the what? There is a blessing that is full. So Apostle Paul is saying what? I'm going somewhere. I am traveling, but I want to branch. And when I come, I want to come in the fullness of the gospel. Because there's something you don't have yet. The gospel has got some blessing in it. Tell your neighbor that. It has got some blessing in it. It has got some blessing in it. And the blessing of God is so great. So the gospel, when you hear the gospel, what we hear is the blessing. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Let me show you a scripture. We read from verse 3 to verse 7. And later in the course of the teaching, we will read further. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Are you in church with your Bible? Are you sure? Come and celebrate Jesus. Ephesians 1, we started reading from verse 3. The Bible says, Blessed be God and the Father of what? Of our Lord Jesus Christ. So who is the Father of Jesus? Please follow me. I want to hear your sound this morning. Who is the Father of Jesus? Who is the Father of Jesus? So what has God does? He said, who has blessed us with what? With every spiritual blessings in every places. There are many people who have misinterpreted this Bible verse. And I've said this thing is financial blessings. No! It's clear. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessings. Now when you tell them, if God has blessed me with financial blessings, why didn't I have the money? They will say there's something you must do. That you are not obeying enough. That you must serve God. You must walk in his way. So that he can bless you. That is not how God bless. There's nothing you have to do. That regarding to God. For God to bless you. The Bible says that what? Who has blessed you? In English. They trust us. I don't understand it too much. But I know past tense and present tense. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So please when you read. What tense is this? It's as simple as that. Who has blessed us? You are already blessed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Once you know Jesus, once you believe Jesus, you have already received the blessing. You have the blessing. You have the blessing. And many times, because our mind is focused on material things, so we keep looking out for it. Where is the blessing? Where is the blessing? Where is it? I don't get it. Let me tell you the gospel in a very simple way so that you can understand this. Whatever God did for you in the gospel, for example, we are in Nigeria right now. It is true that God has blessed you. And I will tell you what those blessings are shortly. You have them. If you are in Russia, the same blessings is accrued to you. If you are in the U.S., you have the same blessing. Wherever you are in the world, are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, if it's material blessing, then wherever I am to, that blessing should be seen. We should not be richer than ourselves. The money should flow accurately. Even in the church right now, we know the money is not accurate. It's not flowing the same way. Some people came to church by faith this morning. Are you getting what I'm saying? They came to church by faith. But whether they come to church by faith, they are working with the blessings. Whether you are, you drove to church this morning, you are walking with the blessing. Whether you carry private jets or helicopter and you landed on our rooftop this morning, you are what? You are walking on the blessings. Because God has already blessed you with these things. When you gave your life to Jesus, when you receive this life, what do you have? You will receive blessing with it. So what is the blessing that we receive? Next verse, verse 4.
Listen, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So, number one blessing that we receive that what that you are choosing, if you are writing, say, I am choosing. Say, I am choosing. I am choosing. So, this choosing is not the name of a church. Glory to God. It is our inheritance in Christ Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Say, I'm the choosing of the Lord. I'm the choosing of the Lord. So, don't let some people babble that they are, they are choosing. <laughs> Do you understand? It is our inheritance. Say, I am choosing. So, that is the first that you are choosing. It means there were many, but God chose you. There were others. He said, just as he chose us in him. Can you hear that now? So, in Christ, we are choosing, not in the world system, but in Christ, that we should be what? We should be holy and without blame before him. Listen, say, I am holy. That's number two. So, you are holy. Those are your spiritual blessings. Those are your blessings. That you are holy. Tell your neighbor, I am holy. So, listen, we don't pray to be holy. It is a blessing that we receive. Are you get what I'm saying now? You ask me for money, I transfer to your account. Are you still praying for it? Are you get what I'm saying now? You don't pray for such anymore because you already have it. You already have it. So what do you do? You use it. Are you getting something now? You use your holiness. You dispense it, and that's what we have. So when people say, ah, we teach eternal salvation. Yes, we teach it. We teach holiness. That I am holy and I'm using it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I am using it. So eternal salvation is not causing you to sin because I am holy. So I walk in holiness in the things that God has made me. So I am not trying to be holy, to be saved. There are two different things. So we are not only, we are not trying to be, no, let me stay holy. Let me walk out and sew. Let me don't do this. You know, don't let me wear jeans. Don't let me put tattoo so I can be holy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Say, I'm holy. I'm holy. And I love this very well. He said, without blame before him in love. Say, I am without blame. Another person say, I am faultless. See, when God looks down from heaven and he looks at you, what is he seeing? He's seeing a faultless man. Ha! Ah, are you get what I'm saying, George? He's seeing a faultless man despite your trespasses. He says, you are only without blame before him. I am without blame. I am faultless. I am faultless. Do you understand what that means? I am faultless. It is a blessing that we have received. You have already received it. So we don't pray to God. God, make me blameless. Make me formless. Mm -mm. You have already received it. Are you say I know my blessings. I am holy. I am holy. I am faultless. I am choosing. Next one, verse 5. It says, having predestined us to what? To adoptions as sons by Jesus to himself. Glory to God. Say, having what? Predestined us. To adoption. So, another one is that I have been adopted as son of God by Jesus himself. Are you getting something now? I have been adopted. I have been adopted. Listen to me. Every blessing that Jesus have that God gave to him, you have it. Please follow me. If God never denied Jesus, God will never deny you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He will never deny you. Everything. He said, you have been predestined. Adoption as sons by Jesus himself. And I'll be teaching on this during the Rebat Conference. You don't want to miss Rebat Conference this year. You don't want to miss it. It says, having presented, presented to us to adoption as sons by Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, I'm a child of God. You know, there's this song that says, Jesus not the only son of God, though. Jesus not the only son of God, though. Is that your, is that your testament? Is Jesus the only son of God? Jesus is the first son. 
Do you understand? He's the firstborn. He's the firstborn. How many of you have firstborn in your family? How many of you have firstborn? So what are you? Are you a child too? In fact, let me tell you something. There's one thing I find out. That even the last born enjoy more than the first born. I don't understand. I don't, I don't know. Do you have last born? I know some first born are beefing right now. <laughs> but if you are last born, you understand what I'm saying. But well, Victor is not enjoying this salmon anymore. You know? <coughs> All things like PI, what are you saying? But first born, first born, I know. Now then they carry the load for head. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The head that is is. All the problem, that is where Jesus carried all the problem for head. He paved the way for the last child. Glory to God! <laughs> he paved the way! He paved the way! Are you God's child? Wave have been paid for you. He paved the way. God used and do particles so that you can enjoy the process. Glory to God. So you don't have to go through what you went through anymore. See, listen. There are some things my elder sister went through that I don't have to go through because she has gone through it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So listen. My elder sister one day, when I was in secondary school, I was in boarding school, then I was going to school. No, I don't know how many of you. Maybe I was the only one. Who, I, I know you have, not, you have never stayed before. I know. So I stole money. I'm making confession now. Right? <laughs> I stole money. Do you know where I hide the money? Should I tell you? How many of you know massets? I carried the masset up, put it under, under the, that thing I used to lift up. I carried, I kept it there. It's secured and safe. So they were looking for the money. I didn't know they would leave the money for that night. If I go to school the next morning, so they described the money was missing. They were looking for. I think it was four thousand naira back then. It was a big money. If that money followed me enter school that time, secondary school, I'll be big boy for the for the whole time. So. Everybody, mommy was looking for the money. I, I have this money is missing. But you know, it takes a thief to know a thief. How many of you accept that? I, I didn't tell her that time. Oh, it was when I grew up, I told her. So, my elder sister, the first child, because she's a bigger one. Bigger one. Maybe she's watching now. I'll send the link to her. So, she discovered where I save and secure the money. So she now came to me. I said, ah, why do you? It's not good. He said, but I will not tell mommy. I will not tell mommy. But let me tell you the most painful part. The money was not declared. <laughs> <laughs> that was the main. Well, I was caught, but now. She now showed me something in her hand. There was a mark on her hand, like 10 of them. So I said, see, look at what mommy did to me when I was young and I stole money. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, because she has went through that as a first child, she prevented me from going through that so I will not have that kind of scar. Are you getting something now? So I might not have scar in my body. Does not mean that somebody has not paid the price for me. Are you getting something now? Jesus paid the price for the scar that you should have. When he made it holy, he brought your sin upon himself. Do you get that? He is the firstborn. He has come to it. He will not allow you to go to it. That is why you are blameless. That's why you are faultless. It is not as if you are not as guilty as charged. Do you hear the song that the choir sang? They said, I am as guilty as charged. Every sin that you have accused me for. Ah, 100%. Uh, yes. But Jesus took it upon himself. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Next verse, verse 6. I'm in church with my Bible. Next verse. It says, So the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us what? Accepted. Verse 6. In the beloved. I love this passage. Tell me, but I have been accepted. In the beloved. I am the beloved of the Father. I am the beloved of God. You don't understand. I am the beloved of God. God loves me more than anybody else. I don't know about you. I said this. Some people look at me and say, ha ha. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. God loves me more than you. This is the gospel according to me. What is your own gospel? Say it. Let me hear Say it loud. 
Did God, you are not even sure. Prove it that God loves you. Me, I will prove it now. You prove it. Come out, come and prove it. Come out. Don't do church. Come out. Come and prove it. Anybody want to prove it? Come out, come out, come and prove it. Give him the mic. Don't do church. Prove it that God loves you. God loves me more than anyone. Who is coming up next to prove it? And this is the reason because he sent his only begotten son to die for me. Come on, celebrate Jesus! Hallelujah. And how he loves me more is because if I if if I was not going to be born, Jesus would not have come. Just... Ah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. See the finishing line. Who again now? The girl loves you. Some people old men, they cannot stand up. Please come out, bro. <laughs> Some people old men, they are passing the mic. <laughs> come on, defend your faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The reason I will say that is that because while I was still in sin, oh! that was when you died. Aya! Come on, celebrate Jesus! Give him the praise. He said, why I was... Are you getting that? I said this. If I was the only one on head... Jesus will still die for me. That shows you how much he loves me. He was thinking about me before he died. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He was thinking about me. He had me in his mind. I don't know about you. I know what he did. That's why I know that I have been accepted in the beloved of the Father. I've been accepted. I've been accepted. He said, God have not given us the spirit of fear. But he have given us the spirit of son. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That we can cry, Habba, Father. You know what that means? Father, dear Father, listen to me. This is one thing the Jewish people fear so much. They dare not do. Call God, Father, who in the hell are you? To, go, to call God, Father. When the writers of Psalm 2 was saying it. He said, God has made him a little lower than the angels. Listen, we are not lower than angels. He said that we are lower than God, but they cannot phantom it. It was a prophecy. When the Bible says we are going to judge angels, the outcome will be lower than people that we are going to judge. And you get what I'm saying now? So the Hebrew, the Jewish people cannot just use it and say, no, you are next to God. You are next to God. Why won't I be next to God? Because I am God's son. I am representative of God on earth. He has accepted me into his beloved. Are you getting what I'm saying, church? He said, to the priest. Can you hear it? To the priest. So, we read it with joy in our hearts. That we are celebrating. To the priest of the glory of his grace. By which he made us accepted. In the beloved. Tell the boy, I'm accepted in the beloved of the Father. Verse 7. I like this. He said, In him, you can see that all the blessings are in what? In him. In him, we have redemption. <laughs> we have redemption. Say, I am redeemed. Is not a name of the church. Glory to God. <laughs> it is my reality in Christ Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Come on, scream and say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. I have been redeemed. Do you know what it means to be redeemed? God took your place. Jesus took your place. That is what he did. He redeemed you by sacrificing himself. He redeemed you by the blood. The forgiveness of sins. We thought about this last Sunday. That we have internal forgiveness in Christ. Glory to God. Past sins, present sin, and future sins. Because Christ has already forgiven us. According to the richness of his grace. Can you see that now? There is a richness to his grace. Say God has blessed me. With all spiritual blessings. Now I know my blessings. Say now I know my blessings. Beyond material things. Can God bless materially? Yes, certainly. But beyond this, I have much more. I have much more. I have much more. I have what others cannot have without Christ. Do you understand? So who is blessed of the Lord here? Yeah. Who is the blessed of the Lord here? Yeah. Come on, scream it! Say, I am the blessed of the Lord. I am the blessed of the Lord. Should I teach a little? Do I still have more time? 
Okay, let's talk a little. The Bible talks about the blessings of Abraham. Glory to God. How many of you know that the blessings of Abraham are yours? Say the blessings of Abraham are mine. <laughs> the blessings of Abraham are mine. So let's talk about the blessings of Abraham a little. Open your Bible with me to the book of Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3, so that we can know what really is the blessings of Abraham. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. He said, Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee out of the country from the kindred, from the father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Verse 2. He says, I will make of thee a great nation. Listen. He said, I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So this is the first promise that God makes to Abraham that is going to bless him, is going to make him great, and through him, others will be what? Will be blessed. So the blessing is more than Abraham's blessing. He is a blessing that flows down to others. Follow me carefully. Are you getting something now? The blessing does what? And verse 3. I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. This dream passed Abraham. You know the understanding that I talk now. This dream, this blessing. Ah! Indeed, all family, how? He cannot phantom it. At the time God gave him this vision, Abraham did not have a child. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He was not even married. Some of you, you are still single. Should I talk to you here now? You have some dreams that look like if it's not going to be possible in your life because your father has not even dreamed that kind of dream before. But I'm here to prophesy into your life that it will come to pass in your lifetime. Every dream that looks great and big and I don't know what I've come to prophesy for this morning. There are people who have some crazy dreams. Do I have them in this house this morning? People who have some crazy dreams. Dreams that are bigger than them. That in the family, in the lineage, no one has ever attained such dream before. God says, I should announce to you, it will come to pass in your lifetime. It will come to pass in your lifetime. This no one has been able to do before your family, you will do them. That this impossible will become possible for you. In the name of Jesus. This is your testimony. Come on, celebrate Jesus. So Genesis 22, let's go further. Genesis 22, verse 17. We're trying to trace the blessings of Abraham. I want to show you something this morning. Genesis 22, verse 17 to 18. Then the Bible says that in blessing, I will bless you. So right in this place, God was again affirming that blessing. He said, blessing, I will bless you and multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven. What does this mean? It means they will be uncountable. And as the sand which is on the seashores, your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. <laughs> they shall possess the gates of their enemies. Verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. In the what? In the seed. You are in church with your Bible, right? Just face your Bible right now. It says, in the seed all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. So the Bible say here that what? In the seed. So it was referring to a particular blessing and a particular person. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He didn't say in the seeds. He said in the seed. Because Abraham had children, not just child. Many of you, if I ask you now, how many child does Abraham have? You will mention two. Ishaka and who? Ishmael and who? And Isaac. But the Bible says Abraham had eight children. So when the Bible says in the seed, which of the seed? He has eight children. Because the first slave had the Ishmael for him. The second wife, the original wife, had the original son for him, which is Isaac. And the Bible says after a while, he went to meet one girl, one of his, after Sarah died. Her name is Keturah. And said, Ketua means sin. That means the guy is smelling fine. Glory to God. That's why it's good for women to smell fine. When you smell fine, you attract the blessings. Glory to God. Maybe the reason why you are not married yet is because you are not smelling fine. Am I talking to somebody? Say, watch your body. Use perf. Know the smell. So that you can attract the right man. So, Ketua attract the right person. Because she smell fine. Tell your neighbor, smell fine. 
smell fine, smell good. So we have Isaac, we have Ishmael, and we have six other children in Genesis 25, verse 1 and 2. Genesis 25, verse 1 and 2. So you won't say this pastor, they tell us what we never hear before. Read it. He said, then again, Abraham took a wife. Her name was Keturah. Keturah means saint. In verse 2, she bare him Zimran. That's one. Joshan, two. Midian, three. Medan, three. Midian, four. Ishbak, five. And Shula, six. Plus those other two. How many children does he have? So when the Bible says, in your seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. What was he referring to? He was talking to a particular person. So which one of them? Now listen to me. If it's material blessing, Ishmael had it. In fact, that guy, now miraculous boy, he did convert things to, mirac to miracle. The Bible says when him and his mother, when Abraham sent them away, and they were going at a particular time, they were tasty. That the wife, the mother said, ha, I can't even look this boy again. We are about to die. There was no water to drink. How many of you have ever been tasty before? And there's no water to drink. You know, there's between between, and they give you food. You say, no, give me water first. I don't know about you. Are you going to say, this is no hunger problem. It is water problem. Are you, there's, there's food problem, oh, but water, that thing is crazy. There was no water to drink. The Bible says, he said that boy went to one side and he prayed to God. He prayed to God and God asked them to turn. And they turned. They saw a well. Listen to me. When did they dig that well? Who dug that well? That means the well has been there. But they did not see it. I pray for someone in this service that you begin to see things that you have not been seeing before. Yeah. That you begin to see opportunities that have been running away from you. Yeah. Everything that has been hidden, you begin to see them in the name of Jesus. And you will walk in the miraculous. Yeah. Do you understand? So I'm trying to tell you how much blessing he had. He had water. And the way he said, the Bible said he became great. He had Hamis. And he's still blessed now. His, his, his family. His origin, his genes, his great grandchildren, children, to these days are still blessed. Are you get what I'm saying now? But it is not carry the seed. He said the promise. Listen, follow me here. The promise was for a seed. The blessing was for a seed. So Abraham had eight children. Only one was the blessing and the seed. The promise flowed through. So he flew through Isaac. Are we getting something now? Now listen. So when Isaac had a child, how many children does Isaac have? Let me hear your voice, church. How many children? He had two. Jacob and Esau. And the Bible says, Jacob I love. Esau I do what? No, he means Esau. I, he's not eight. He means Esau I prefer. God does not hate. He does not have capacity to hate anybody. So when you look at the correct interpretation of that place. He didn't say Esau or eight. It means Esau I prefer. Uh, Jacob I prefer. And why did he prefer Jacob? It's because in his lungs is the seed and the blessing. Now listen. To prove to you, Esau was not cost financially. He was not a poor man. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm saying now. Esau was not poor. Let me show you a scripture. You know, the Bible says that Jacob sold his bread. Esau sold his bread, right? And we feel like, ah, that guy missed the blessing. Mm -mm. That's what I'm saying. That it's not financial blessing. Open your Bible with me to Genesis. Let me show you. Genesis 36. Genesis 33. Verse 6 to 7. He said, then Esau took his wife's me, I used to take note of this sentence very well. Genesis 6, verse 6. Then Esau took his wives. <laughs> Listen. Some of you don't even get wives. But I said you won't get wives. Are you kidding me now? Poor man, they get wives. <laughs> he has wives. Listen. His sons, his daughters, and all the persons of his households so he have people living with him. He have servants. Listen, his cattle and all his animals, 
all his good which he had gained in the land of Canaan and went to a country away from the princess of what? Of Jacob. Listen, verse 7. For their possession were too great for them to do it together. That means both of them were both what? Blessed materially and financially. So he was not a poor man. So when Esau missed blessing, well, what, are they fighting for? what are they fighting for? They are fighting for the seed and the promise that is coming to them. That's why when you see the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew, I know some of you will get it now, and in Luke, he was tracing from Abraham to Isaac to, to Jacob to Judah and even to Perez. He missed Esau. He missed Ishmael. The genealogy, that was what they were fighting for. Because that's where the blessing is flowing to. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's where the blessings is going to. Galatians 3. Galatians 3, because of our time, let me show you something. Galatians 3. From verse 13. So the Bible says, it says, Christ has redeemed us from what? From the cause of the Lord, which have become a cause for us. It is written, cause is everyone who is what? Who is hung on the tree. Verse 14. That the what? The blessings of Abraham. That means the blessing that God gave Abraham might come upon the Gentile. Follow me here. Might come upon who? The Gentile. Who are the Gentile? The not believing Jew. In Christ Jesus, remember when we started from the Ephesians, every blessing was what? In Christ. So Jesus was the seed that God told Abraham, in your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Are you kidding now? So by the virtue of you, believing in that Jesus, you are a partaker of that blessing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you understand that now? You are a what? A particle of that blessing that you may what first year that you may receive the promise of the spirit through what? So, what was the promise that God gave to Abraham that it will bless him in your seed? All the nations of the earth will be what will be blessed. What is that blessing that Jesus is the seed and is that blessing? So, what is the promise that was flowing that they were all longing for? Is the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there is a promise. There is a blessing that is great. There is a blessing that is great beyond material things. That when you have Jesus, you receive that thing that was promised to Abraham. Everything that Jacob and Esau was fighting for. Everything that the children of Israel were looking for. By the virtue of your faith in Christ Jesus, you have it. Hebrews 11, let me close right now. Hebrews 11, 39. Let me show you a scripture. Hebrews 11, 39. He said, and this all, having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. So the, the books of Hebrew, we call it the books of heroes of faith. So here they mention Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Gideon, Joshua, Daniel, that all these guys did exploits. They did exploits. They do wonders. Listen to me. They have material blessings. They have financial blessings. But in verse 39, the Bible says, all these having obtained a good report, they get money, they get everything through faith, but receive not the promise. In verse 40, what the Bible says, it says, God Having provided hey, something better for us. What has God did? He provided something better for us. That they should not be what? So, in Ephesians 1, he said you are only and without fault. Were you made perfect? Were you made perfect? Go back to that Ephesians 3 that started from. Ephesians 3, it will make sense now. Ephesians 3, verse 13. The Bible says, in him you also, you also trusted. So that when you believe, you trusted. After you have heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation. Ephesians 1 verse 13. Sorry. Ephesians 1 verse 13. That's our test. Ephesians 1 verse 13. He said, in him you also have what? Have trusted. After you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your what? Of your salvation. In him also, having believed, which means after you have believed the gospel, what happened? After you have believed the gospel, what happened? You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ah, are you sealed? Are you seed with what? With the Holy Ghost that was promised to who? To Abraham. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That the Holy Ghost that was promised, they never had it. They never had it. But the Holy Ghost that was promised was given to you. It's now a gift to you. It's now your blessing. Are you getting what I'm saying, church? It's now your blessing. He said, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise that has been promised long ago. Now you have it. Do you have the Holy Ghost in you? Are you sure you do? Come and scream, I have it. I have it. Verse 14. Verse 14. He says, who is the guarantee of our what? Inheritance until the redemption of the what? Purchase possession to him the praise of the Lord. Glory to God. Say, I have the Holy Ghost in me. I have the Holy Ghost in me. Let me close right now. Romans 8 39. 31. Romans 8 31. We will read to verse 39. Romans 8 31. My last scripture for this morning. The Bible says, What shall we send then say to all these days that we have the blessings? We have the promise. We have the blessing of the Lord. What shall we send say to all these things? He said, if God now be for you, because God is for you. Are you getting something now? He's God for you. Tell the neighbor, say, God is for me. Say, God is for me. He now wait for that. He said, who can be against you? <laughs> say, who? Who, 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 who? See, there's a thing they used to use in the world. They say, who you be? You understand? Who you be? Identify yourself. Now he said, who can be? No matter who they be. He said, who can be against us? Ah! Say, who can be against us? Verse 32. I love this. He, who did not spare his own son. Hiya! God did not spare his own son. But deliver him for what? For us, Lord. Who are the us? Those of us that are saved. That believe Jesus. Are you get what I'm saying now? So it's not for everybody. It is for the saved. I say I'm the saved. Say I believe in what Christ has done. That he died for me. He resurrected for me. He ascended for me. But he said that I believe. I am saved. So if you are saved, he said he delivered him for us all. How shall he not with him? You know, in Ephesians 1, everything is what? In him. Now, with him. Also give us what? All things. So he says, if God can give us Jesus, what will he not give to you? Nothing. Nothing. If God can give us Jesus, what will he not give us? Let me tell you what it means. You come to me and I look at your life. Everything is not going fine. I say, see, I want to give you my son, which is very impossible. No matter how much I love you. I say, see, I want to give you my son. My first son for that matter. <laughs> Am I mad? <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I'm saying now. Am I mad? I'm not mad. I can't. And I give you my son. Guy, is it possible for you to come to me for any other thing I will not give you? I have given you my most priceless gifts. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Bible says, if God can give you Jesus, there's nothing else he will not give you. Do you understand what I'm saying now? There's nothing else he will not give you. No, next verse, let me show you some of the things that he gave to me. Some of you don't understand. So if God can give you Jesus, is it to save you internally that he will not be able to save you? To forgive your sin. What is sin? Who are you sinning against? Is it not God? He said, I have given you my son. I am not seeing your sin anymore. Are you get what I'm saying, George? He said, 
who shall bring a charge against what? Remember in Ephesians 1, you have been what? Chosen. <laughs> you have been adopted. He said, now, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? They come, come. They say, come, see what they are doing. Listen to me. I've shown you before in the book of Numbers 22. That they call Balak and Balaam. Balaam, Balaam, call Balak. He said, come, see children of Israel. See how those guys are misbehaving. I showed you from the scripture, right? He said, when he looked, he could not see their sin. Are you getting something? They are not under a better covenant. You are under a better covenant. He said, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who does what? Are you justified? Are you justified? Come on, scream, say, I am justified. Say, I am justified. I might be guilty as charged, but God has justified me. He has justified me. Next verse, verse 34. He said, who is he who condemns? <laughs> who is he who condemns? Have we seen people that ministry is to condemn? They keep watching for your mistakes. They have PhD in observing your thoughts. They will never see anything good in what you do. And they keep telling people. They are the ones that you make mistakes. They don't screenshot and video you. See that guy, don't fuck up again. See that guy, they don't break up again. You don't understand? They say, who is it that condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is what? Is also risen. Then who is even what? At the right hand of God. Who also make what? Us. It means that you are guilty as charged. You did what they said. You are made to be condemned. But by the virtue of who you have, the resurrected God. Are you Jesus? And who is at the right hand of the Lord making intercession for you? Are you getting what I'm saying now? See, I don't want to go further. I would have shown you first John 1, first John chapter 4. Who says, believe it? <laughs> Try not to sin, avoid sin as much as possible. But if you sin, he said, you have an advocate with what? Will the Father? Same thing. So when you sin, you have an intercessor with God. What is he doing? He's saying, no, God, I put it upon myself. I took it upon me. And you get up saying, just like what my sister did for me. She covered me for my sin and showed me the mark. So when God wants to speak, he said, God, look at the mark. Look at the nail. I took it for Victor. I took it for hosting. Come on, mention your name. I took it for blessing. I took it for MJ. I took it for you. Look at the mark. I took it for Jonathan. Are you kidding? I'm saying now. I took it for Philip. I took it for Daphne. Are you kidding? I'm saying now. The mark. Said, See God. Look at it. This is the mark. The price I paid. Did God pay the price for you? Did He pay the price for you? Come on, rejoice, rejoice. Verse thirty-five. Let me show you. He said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So all these things were born because God loves us. So see my brother came out. He said, because God loves him and he died for him. Why he was yet sinner? So it was a part of love. He said, who then shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, famine, nakedness, Perry or sword, he said nothing. Verse 36. Nothing. When the Bible says nothing, it means nothing. Are you getting something now? You see, at his written, for your sake, we are killed all day. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37. Yet in all these things, what are we? We are more than conqueror to him who loved us. Are you more than conqueror? Are you more than conqueror? Come and jump on your feet and scream, I am more than conquerors. To Christ who loved me, I know my blessings. I know my blessings. Christ died for me. He resurrected for me. He ascended for me. By that virtue, I became holy. I became pure. I became blameless. I am sanctified. I am justified. I am blameless. I am the beloved of God. Come on, scream it. Say, I'm the beloved of God. I'm the beloved of God. And nothing can separate me from his love. 
Nothing can separate me. Nothing can separate me. I don't know about you, but nothing can separate me from God's love. So if God can give me Jesus, what else will he not give me? Is this sanctification? Is this justification? Is it to keep me safe till the end of time? My evil sure. I don't know about to come on speaking to me. I know you are sure of it. Do you know why your heaven is sure? Because of what Christ has done for you. He died for you so that you can secure your place in the heavenly places. Come on, rejoice! Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Come on, screams, I have been blessed by the Lord. I know my blessings. I know my blessings. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Come on, if you are celebrating Jesus, you can do it louder. You can make it louder. You can make it louder. If you know you are sure of the thing that you have received in Christ Jesus. You know, the psalm is speaking in the book of Psalms. It says, the sound of joy and rejoicing. He said it is felt in the tabernacle of the righteous. Praise the Lord. You know, growing up, I grew up in a Yoruba church and we didn't fully understand what this thing that God has done. But when this verse is being read, probably because it's read in Yoruba, there, there is this joy that leaps in our womb. The Bible says when uh, Mary went to inform Elizabeth, her cousin, that what she's carrying the pregnant of Jesus, the baby in her womb leaped for joy. So at the mention of salvation that Jesus Christ gives to us, we are meant to rejoice and shout for joy, knowing that that we have received. Praise the Lord. You know, the Bible said the first time that they rejoiced in the Bible was when the children of Israel, like when they escaped slavery from the hands of Pharaoh, which signify us to escaping slavery from the hands of the devil. Praise the Lord. So there was joy that what they escaped that slavery in the hands of, you know, devil sought to hold us captive, but Jesus Christ has redeemed us. So we rejoice in that. Praise the Lord. So when we talk about our salvation as believers, it is expected that joy leaps from the inside of us. Praise God. Come on, have you been blessed by the word of God? Have you been blessed? I'd like you to put your hands together and say thank you, Pastor. All right, say it one more time like you mean it. Say thank you, Pastor. All right, let's have our seat. we take a few announcements and um, we'll be living here now. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor. We are blessed by your ministry. Thank you so much that in simplicity of God's word, you are able to teach us what salvation is. We pray that your ministry is accepted by all in the name of Jesus. All right, um, our service days remain the same. It is unchanged. On Sundays, we meet for our Sunday service by 9 a.m. And on Thursdays, we have our midweek services by 6 p.m. And um, like Pastor has always said, um, it is the same quality of service. The word is preached and power is demonstrated. So on Thursdays by 6 p.m. And on Sundays by 9 a.m., God bless you in the name of Jesus. Um, I'm very sure the offering envelope is being passed around. Let's do well to um, put in our offerings. And if we'll be uh, making transfer, the church account details will also be displayed on the screen. Um, repair conference is here. Hallelujah. All right. Pastor has announced repair conference will be coming up on 27, 28, and 29th of this month. Let's do well to pray ahead and plan our ahead to be around. God bless you in the name of Jesus. All right, let's jump up to our feet while we take our offering. And the choir are going to sing and we dance and give to the Lord with joy in our hearts. Your love is so great. You are merciful and gracious. You freed my soul from every destruction. I will sing. I will sing your praise. I will bless and live. 